guys, I'm gonna take y'all through my pack, everything I use, everything I take into the woods, how much it weighs, where I stow it, how I stow it. Once again, I like to build habits so I don't have to focus on my memory. I don't have to rely on my memory. As you get flustered, as things change, too many variables come in place into playing, you have to start trying to remember too much. If you have habits, you won't go wrong with habits. I put my release in the same pocket, in that right pocket, in my Sitka Ascent pants. I know every time, if I pat that pocket and it ain't there, there's a problem. I put my phone in the same place. I put my um, wind checker in the same spot. Do the same thing every time so you don't have to remember it, all right? So here we go. First thing for my pack, I got my saddle, platform, all my SRT gear, camera gear uh, for when I'm self-filming, water, because a lot of y'all, been doing these pack weights, but you've been leaving your water out of there. You can't, don't go out into the woods without water. All of that's here, multiple layers for rain, for when it's cold, all of that stuff is in here. So this is a true pack weight, the worst case scenario. So I'm at 20, let's see. So about 28, somewhere between 28 to 28 and a half pounds for everything to stay hydrated, to stay warm, to climb the tree, to be up there comfortable. The only thing that's not in this weight is my bow and this bag of corn. All right, let's go. First off, I'll lay my pack to the side. I got the tethered phantom. I have the mantis as well. Um, I use that if somebody else comes out to hunt with me. I bought the phantom because the mantis was good, but it would kind of ride up over time in the hunt and I would find myself moving and adjusting more. So once this came out, a buddy of mine really, really hyped it up. So hey, shout out to you. You made me spend some more money with tethered, but I respect his opinion, so once I saw that this wasn't going to ride up nearly as much, it's going to be a lot more comfortable, um, I moved over to this Phantom. And it just so happened to work out that it has an adjustable bridge, am still adjustable bridge, so it works out for when I do SRT as well. I'm using their bigger sis hauler pouch, and I set it up the same way every time, guys. And it only makes sense if I got a whole nother Phantom because of comfort level. You know I gotta have the recliner. So I have the tethered recliner. I got a pull-up rope that I rarely use now at this point, but it's nice to just have some more paracord. You never know what you need it for because I use my SRT rope uh, to pull my bow into the tree. The main pouch. I'm definitely not gonna go into detail on this because you're gonna have to go back into the previous video, videos and check out uh, my SRT method, the way I've been climbing. Um, but my Ascender, my TRC, my Mavrock safeguard, all of that's in there. Here is the HYS strap, the hang your stuff strap. I put this in the bottom for an obvious reason, right? The first, because when I get to the tree, first thing I'm gonna pull out is my climbing gear. So it makes sense for that to be on top. Then I'm all the way up there. Once I'm climbed, then I can pull out the hang your stuff strap, get that up there on the tree, hang my backpack up there, hang my bow. We keep it moving. Hey, leave in the comments below, guys, how long you think it takes before I break down, spend the money, and change out this Samson Predator rope that I'm using for a tether and a lineman's belt to uh, Oplux. I'm trying to hold on, but the packability of that Oplux, oh my God, it's just, and it's funny, it's the center comparison. Never had an issue with bulk of these ropes until I start seeing how packable that Sterling Oplux eight millimeter is. So let me move this out of the way. So here's the profile of my pack, guys. I'm using a, Yes, I'm using a pack frame for saddle hunting because I don't like to, I don't like to clean my animals out there in the field. Um, sometimes I'll field dress them out there, but I really like to be able to strap them to this pack and hustle out so I can get them home, actually wash them, wash the animal up, clean it out real good, pack it out, quarter it out. No dirt, no hair on any of the meat, okay? Just one of the ways to make sure that the meat's not gaming. So we just talked about how bulky the Samson Predator is only by comparison. I was perfectly happy with it until I came into contact with this, but boom. So this is about 50 feet of Sterling Oplux, eight millimeter, and it's about the same bulk 
as my tether on that Samson Predator. So this is what I'm using as my climbing rope. I just keep it, I keep it attached with um, a bite that I have on that Sterling Oplux. I literally just use this Night Eyes gear tie, one of them, just to keep it, you know, twist it and then I tuck it in. I put it down here and I lay it in this, in this little crease between the um, bat wing pouches and then I put my platform over it and it doesn't move. It doesn't get caught on anything. This is the main reason. So hey guys, I don't care about weight necessarily. I just don't like things hanging above my head. I'm already a bigger guy. So when I'm crouching below limbs and stuff, climbing sticks, hanging on stuff, I've always thought that was annoying. I've always had it in my mind that I was gonna cut down some sticks and use aiders and, and, and do this and that and the third. I just came across the SRT method first and um, I'm starting to like it. So my platform, and I need everything to be quiet, including that helicopter that's flying above me right now. <laughs> so platform, I got the Predator platform, just the regular size one. Think about the XL, but I don't, I don't need a bigger platform. I need a platform with more grip. So hey, leave below in the comments on what y'all have done to make your uh, platform non-slip. I need to get to one of these subs and get some of that non-skit that they use on the top side of the deck. But anyways, hold my platform on. I just run it behind here in this crease that's between the backpacks or the back pads for comfort back there. And then I just secure it here. One thing about bungee is it, it absorbs the shock as it moves so it keeps it quiet. It rides along with this. Um, when you use something like paracord or some type of strap, a lot of times as it bounces, it'll start to work loose and you'll develop a rattle but with this bungee, it keeps it nice and perfect. Go ahead and make fun of my blue bungee cord. I am not getting rid of it for camo. I haven't, I've yet to have an animal bust me because of um, my blue bungee. So I take it off and I just kind of secure it to these loops up here. Predator platform. In the last video, I asked y'all, you know, if you were in the Navy, if you know what this is, to comment below. I'll give you the answer now. We call these blousing straps. The bottom of our pants, we put them down there to secure it um, to make sure that our pants are at the proper, between the proper eyelets on our boots. So, but I like it because it just makes it nice and easy when I'm wrapping up or storing it. I just wrap this rope around and then boom. So these are bat wing pouches. They are modular. They zip onto the, they zip onto the mainframe. There's one here in the, there's a zipper here and there's one on either side. So, I love I love a fleece. It's quiet. Um, obviously, when it's zipped up, that's just the zipper kind of rattling. But it's quiet when I'm coming to full draw and all this stuff, and it keeps me nice and warm. So I keep that fleece back here, just tucked in um, and zipped up. Once again, my muddy this is the cheapest camera arm that they got. I got it attached by just some bungee line. Um, that I've tied through these loops. I can slide it in here. The fleece is on top. It doesn't move at all. So when I'm at the tree, it's nice and easy to pull out. So on my left side, I have the camera bag. There's a Sony RX100 and a GoPro in this bag. It's nice and simple. It just stays right here. $2 knee pads. To be comfortable. I always keep some form of water. Um, I, I couldn't find my um, I couldn't find my Camelback bladder that I usually keep in here, but I always got some water. And I haven't taken this out of my pack. I always just had that fear that maybe I'd be walking through the woods and somehow I lose that mat rock, and I don't want to have to go back. You know, and go grab my climbing sticks or something like that. I use these um, a lot of times when I, if I'm like field dressing, I'll use these. Really because those half lines are so sharp, I really don't want to cut myself. These are used for like laying fish and stuff like that, so they're meant to be able to take a knife to it and not really break through if you don't put a whole lot of force behind it. Wind checker. Yeah, this is from like the camping section at Walmart. This has come in handy so many times, just a little soft. 
is actually decently light for you know how cheap it is. It's a cog one. I got a headlamp. Now it's just red light, regular light. I don't really bring a backup headlamp just because I have my personal phone, I have a work phone. Those are that's plenty of light. If this doesn't work, if I can't make it out with one of my uh without one of my phone lamps or phone lights, man. Oh well. This knife, I don't even know the brand. This is like issue two. Oh, it's a bench made. This is for like the heavier bow. Um, if you're gonna split a pelvis or something like that. I don't skin anything out with it, I just keep it in the pack. It really could use some work. Havlon, I told y'all before, I don't cut anything unless I'm using the Havlon. I got the replacement bread, uh, blades. This weighs nothing, it cuts everything. Now, this bat wing pouch on my right. I got the camera base, it goes, it's another muddy base. Um, I've told y'all before that I took off the ratchet strap because that came with it because it's ridiculous to be using a ratchet strap in the woods when you're trying to be quiet. Um, Girth hitched this lone wolf strap that they use for their Versa buttons. Girth hitched it there and boom, bring it to this other side and pull it tight. I gotta redo my um, dampener for the, you know, the tire inner tube trick. Everybody knows that we've seen it on YouTube a million times. Take an inner tube, cut it, slide it over there, and then it'll be nice and damp. No noise against metal. Mine's wearing out a little bit. Caught this rain jacket on sale, and I see why it's on sale. Because it has failed me multiple times, and I still haven't bought a new one because they're expensive. This was $35, it's a Cabela's. Um, I don't even know which one of their line. It keep, it'll keep a little bit of warmth in, but I can pretty much see through this thing now. So it's really more of a windbreaker for me than anything. I'll put this underneath that fleece and I'll put the fleece on top of it just because the fleece will quiet down this noisy rain jacket. Then I got some Gore-Tex Sitka pants. I always keep these with me because you never know. There's nothing worse than sitting in the saddle with wet underwear. <laughs> and that's it guys, that's the pack. That is, I mean, it's simple and plain, very modular. And then when you kill something, Did I speak too soon? Is the zipper failing me? There we go. Nope. Operated air. Everything's packed back up with the exception of the platform and the rope because that's going to go outside. And then obviously I wear this out of the woods. So this is simulate the animal. So all I'm going to do. take these straps. Have to channel your inner camera hangs however you, ever, however you want to do it just don't injure your back in the woods put it up there lock it in 
in. Obviously you have your saddle on. Grab your bow. Remember, you got good habits, so you put your release in the same place every single time. Crack out, baby. Let's go.